Hi again, and welcome back. Okay, let's get the tapped holes done and move on to these side faces, and then like that, our part is processed. Maybe the only other thing we'll do is create some chamfering. So I'm gonna come right back up here to the start. I'm gonna select my cylinder, I'm gonna go to drilling, I'm gonna go to hole machining, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose tapping. Why not? And now here, I'm gonna go ahead and find my tap drill. So, or, or pardon me, my tap. So I'm gonna come into here, and I believe we're doing with those uh, an 832. It's perfect. We'll say good. Set your fees and speeds as you want. Everything passes in here. You can set the RPM as you want. Top side will take care of it. And let's go ahead and find the brothers and sisters again. Green check mark. Now, if you wanted, for example, I know that these are actually the same as well. I could go here and select them as well. That is okay, but what may happen is your cycles may change because the altitudes and rapid planes are changing. So this may start a cycle, end a cycle, change, start a cycle, stay in a cycle, end a cycle, change, stay in a cycle. If you don't care, this is great. If you want things to be a bit more clean, then you're going to want to do the drillings uh, altitude by altitude. Okay, but for expedience sake in a video, this works just fine. So tapped holes done, perfect. I'm going to come into here next. I'm going to do hole machining again. We're going to switch over here to tapping. Notice it went and grabbed my tap for me, which is fantastic. I'm going to come into here, find the brothers and sisters. Again, come in here, set your RPM as you need. Done. Perfect. So now that we have all that done, now it's time to do the outside. And we're going to get started directly by going to this hole. Why not? So I'm going to select this one, drilling, hole machining. Again, notice it activates the correct origin for us. I'm going to go ahead and switch us to tip drilling first. It's going to grab our 3 8 diameter tip drill. All I want to do is set speeds and feeds. So I'm going to run this at 6,000 because I know that's a good one for that. I'm going to run this at about 10,000 ship load, and that's fine. To speed things up, because it's just a simple single drilling, and I know Topside will take care of the work origin for me, I can just zoom up a little bit here, and I'm going to come grab this toolpath, control, drag, and drop it to there. Perfect. And I can double check this. This is P3, P3, also perfect. I'm going to zoom up, drag and drop. Done. P4, P4, love it. Zoom back out, and I'm going to zoom up again. I'm going to take this tool path and take it to this one here. And that's P5. And like that, I've now done all of the tipping. Pretty cool. Over here, I'm going to shift select all of these things, hit the eyeballs to turn off the tool path. Since I'm on this position right now, I'm going to go ahead, right click, go straight to drilling on this, and let's drill out that hole. So looking for a 173 diameter drill. Let's see what I have loaded here. Um, I got 149. I got a number 25 drill in there. I'm going to go ahead and use that for now. You could go create a drill by double clicking or go load a drill from your library as well. My goal right now is just to kind of show processing. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to set my pecking and clearing. I'm going to come in and set my uh, feeds and speeds. Again, we're going to set this maybe at 7,500, and maybe I know this tool should be at 25 inches a minute. No coolant, it likes it dry. Who knows? Done. Lastly, I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to do these drillings. So I'm going to go drilling, hole machining. This is a quarter inch diameter. I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to choose again probably my 228, because that's probably a quarter 20 tapped hole up there. So I'm going to select that drill, set my feeds and speeds. And I'm just going to accept that, you know, that's a little bit slow. Let's make that 50 inches a minute. I dig it. Let's come into here. Let's set that pecking and clearing again. Instead of clearing, let's just use a standard pecking cycle. I'm done. And now like that, the only thing left to do is copy that to the rest of these because it's, in fact, the same drilling. So control, drag and drop. Control, drag and drop. And again, always I'm paying attention to make sure it's calling the right work offset for me, which it is. So now I have all of my drillings done. The last thing I need to do is I need to break all the edges because they're all sharp edges right now, right? And the customer said, you know what? You can throw a 15,000 chamfer on everything. It would really help us out if you did. So here I hit save really fast. And now last tool path. I'm going to go here to others and go to breaking edges. And breaking edges milling is a fantastic feature of Top Solid. Now, it doesn't know what WCS you want to work on or what work origin because we can work on any side of the part with this tool path. I want to work from my 54.1 P1. So I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to tell Top Solid that. Here's all of the different work offsets. I'm going to say 54.1 P1 at B0 and C0, more, uh, most importantly. Perfect. By the way, as I mouse over out here, 
Watch on the screen out here. You see this little red tool? It's showing you the orientation of the cut dynamically as you mouse over. Just another cool feature of Top Solid. Next, I'm going to go to my geometry button, and I'm going to set a hole diameter limit because I don't want to chamfer all the small drillings, only anything that's one inch or bigger. I'm going to ask the software to find every edge. So based on that orientation now, it has found every single edge to chamfer. Pretty cool. But if you look at this, some of these edges look like they're going to run into things. Well, let's see what Top Solid does with that. I'm going to click OK, and here comes our toolpath. And like that, everything is chamfered. But wait a minute. Top Solid is not colliding with the part. Wait a minute. Let's look at that toolpath. That's, that's really cool. If we zoom up and look at this, notice that it let on and let off based on a lateral safety distance for the tool I've chosen to use. Here it didn't machine anything at all because the safety distance said a collision would happen. Over here on the through hole, it machined part of it, but it would have collided with the wall. It came off, led back on here because it can get this much of it. I mean, think about how intelligent that is, and I did nothing. Let's go edit this because I just realized, you know what, I'm using my spotting drill, and I don't want to use my spotting drill. I would prefer to use my quarter-inch chamfer mill. So let's go ahead and use that. There's my quarter-inch chamfer mill. It just updated the toolpath in real time. I'm going to see if we can get it to machine some of this as well. Let's go look at some of our settings. If I go to my plunge side, peripheral safety distance, this is how close that tool can get to the finish of the part. So if I set this at 0.08, you'll see the toolpath get a little bit closer. This is how close the tip of the tool can get to colliding with the part. So I'm going to set this to be a little bit smaller. And notice now I've picked up part of that edge. Cool. Like that, everything is done. Nice.